Welcome! This is video 3 of the tracker project. The uh, real-time clock will be using the DS3231. Hi, here we have the block diagram of the DS3231. And you can see how simple it is on the outside world. We have a main supply, a battery backup supply, a ground. We have clock and data for the I2C interface. There's a reset out, which can be used to reset your system if needed. And it has two pull down outputs. The one I'm interested in is the interrupt stroke square wave and then there's a 32 kilohertz output which I'm not interested in. The important bit is there are control and status registers, there are clock and calendar registers, there's a user buffer which is I think the one that you read when you read the timeout. There's an oscillator and there's a temperature sensor and the temperature sensor is used with this logic and control and dividing part to compensate temperature drift on the oscillator. There is a capacitor array, which can be, the capacitors can be put in and out of circuit to speed up or slow down the oscillator depending on the temperature. So that's basically what's in there. The, the bit that's more important for us or for me is RS-232 lines, power supply lines, and the interrupt output. This is the register map and as you can see there are some that are zeros that are all greyed out and they're basically the register will return a zero no matter what. It's just filling up the space in the registers that's unused. I've put slightly different colours, it's not the best, but it's basically just to highlight them out. But uh, the data that you put into the chip for the time and for the everything else is in binary coded decimal. So basically 0 to 9 is 4 bits. And so to make up the seconds we have 0 to 9 and for the tens of seconds 0 to 5. Therefore giving us a combination of anywhere between 0 and 59. And it's the same for minutes. So basically that's how it's all built up. It's all built up in kind of units, tens. So hours are in 0 to 9, and then there's the 0 to 2, to put it into the kind of 0 to 10, 10 to 20 range. The day is 1 to 7, because it's 7 days a week, and the date, of course, is 0 to 9, and the tens are 0 to 30. So therefore, you can get anywhere between the 1st to the 31st. The century... Now, when we're using it, we want the century to be a zero. And what happens then is, by the time we get to the end of this century, and it's 99, year 2099, as it rolls over from 99 to zero, the century bit will go from zero to a one to indicate that you've rolled over. And so that's simply how you set up the time. Moving on to the next block of registers. Again, the colours are roughly the same as what they were up top. For alarm 1, we have seconds, tens of seconds, minutes, tens of minutes, hours, like tens of hours. The difference down here is we have date, day, and date. And there is a day and date bit. So if it's set high, then 1 to 7 is important. If it's a 0, then the date is important. So you can have it repeat only on once a month or you can have it repeat on one day, every, on a particular day every week. And how this generates an alarm is configured in these four bits here. Alarm one, memory one, two, three, and four or mode, whatever you want to call it. And it's explained down here. 
here we have the day and the date and as you can see if that's set the alarm goes off when the day hours minutes and seconds match if we have all ones it will trigger once a second and then as you go down it's when the seconds match minutes and seconds match hours minutes and seconds the date hours minutes and seconds and then the or the day so quite self-explanatory i'm not concerned with the seconds so much so i shall be using alarm two just in case i want to use alarm one for something else later and this as you can see has lost the seconds it only has minutes hours and the day and date as before and of course and it only has three settings for the alarm condition because it's lost the seconds and to keep consistency they've called them a2 m2 m a2 m3 a2 m4 and they've just dropped off the a1 m1 makes life easier and again you can see they've the alarm has slightly changed the uh you, it now alarms once a minute as the minute rolls over from 59 to zero so then you can have it alarm when the minutes match hours and minutes match and you know as as says here so basically you know you put your pattern in and away it goes here we have the first of the important registers the control register which basically is enable the oscillator now uh, i don't understand why you'd want to disable it but you can if it's if there's power to vcc this is overridden and the oscillator always runs this allows a backup a battery backed up square wave to be produced when it's running on battery the convert here or stands for conversion and basically that's the temperature conversion you put a one in there and it sets the chip to do a temperature conversion and then when it's finished the uh, temperature data comes back in here but i'm not going to talk much about that or i'm not going to talk about the aging offset as well so basically there is a square wave output rs1 and rs2 allow you to select four different frequencies that come out on that pin it uses the same pin as the interrupt so setting this interrupt disables this if you want to use the alarm inter as an interrupt and i shall be disabling those because i want the output to go low when the alarm matches a2 ie and a1 ie are basically the enable lines so if you want the alarm to do something you put a one in either of these and away it goes the uh, second important register is status or control stroke status basically it gives you some more information if for any reason your battery backup supply has failed you've left it run too long and it's gone below a level that the clock can't sustain itself then this oscillator fault flag will be high and this will stay high until you clear it but it's to let you know that the time that you're reading may not be any good again these are always going to be zeros this enables the 32 kilohertz square wave to come out of the 32 kilohertz square wave pin this is the busy flag this basically when you start a conversion over here the busy flag will be set and you can't do anything until it clears so if you want to do a temperature conversion you should always go in to the states register have a look at that flag if it's not set start your conversion and then go keep go back keep looking at that busy flag till it clears and then you know that the data here is okay a2f a1f are the uh, alarm flags and they will be set if the alarm conditions are matched for alarm one or two and if the enable lines are set if the enable lines are set and the inter interrupt is set for the alarm when these go high that one will go low and they will stay in that state until you clear them yourself so what will happen in the tracker is the interrupt will go low for the alarm it will power up the microcontroller and then the first thing the microcontroller would do is read these to see 
which why it was woken up and then clear it to reset everything back so that's the registers and what they do it's just a quick simple program show you how it works it's based on ds3231 library that's on the Arduino's and uh, yeah you set it up as a clock what you can call it what you like and basically I then turn off the alarm apologies for uh, some language here but it had me foxed for a while drove around a bend and as you can see there are two functions set set alarm two time and set alarm time one there is only one difference ish between the two functions and that is you can set the seconds in the alarm one time but the annoying bit is the mode bits for the alarm on alarm two are in the high nibble so 111 being seven that is the interrupt every sec every minute alarm setting well in alarm two it's in the high nibble if you were doing the same one on alarm one it would be in the low nibble and it's not documented it doesn't tell you that's what you got to do and it foxed me for a while i kept changing the things and uh, of course nothing was happening and when you're new to the chip and you're new to it you know you want to have things that are simple and at some point i'm going to go in and i'm going to change that on my own version of it because i think it's just plain silly when you when you want to start up you can check the oscillator i said that was a function in one of the registers and it comes back and it says print time okay if that bit's not set now the problem is if it is set in the library there is no way of clearing it so you'll always have that bit set i just added an extra clear oscillator foul bit so if it does get set at least i can now clear it and then this little program basically just gets the hour gets the minutes gets the seconds so at the beginning it would have come up and it would have said time okay and showed the time and then while the interrupt bit on the clock module is high it just loops around in here as soon as it goes low it lights the LED well it's 400 milliseconds so you can see it it then calls the check if alarm for number two and that reads the alarm bit and if it's set clears it which then would also clear the interrupt and then I set the LED off, delay for 400 milliseconds and go around again. The delays are there just so that it gives the LED something to you know, light up a bit, a bit longer so to speak and then it just prints down here active at and the time it went and as you can see it's every minute when it goes from 59 to 0 on the seconds and that's just demonstrating that it works. This is the little module the little module is actually got five pins going to it and I've had to modify it because it, one of the pins is was not used and I've modified the board with a little wire link which if you look at the video that will be up here in a minute that will uh, show you the link and as you can see you know, there was just a little burst of light to show that it had transitioned and the seconds had incremented by one. So this is just part three, getting the real time clock to work and talk to it. Part four will be the telecommunication side of it. If you like this and want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, I'll see you next time.